In this lesson we'll be looking at art from ancient Sparta. The Spartans were very creative people who produced some very beautiful things. They had sculpture, painted vases, bone and ivory carving. And they were very talented, very creative and like a lot of people in the ancient world they produced some amazing things without much technology. Sparta, like most Greek city-states, displayed an interest in luxury, poetry and music. So they were similar to people today, weren't they? I mean, even today we still like music, we still like having luxuries. The Spartans didn't have a lot of technology. You know, they didn't have TVs, computers, DVD players, but they liked to live comfortably. They liked to enjoy themselves and eat good food. And I think the only difference between us and them is really that we've got more technology um, and perhaps poetry isn't as popular anymore. I think in Australia today poetry is not all that popular. Um, it's studied in school and so on but you know it's not that big. But music is still very big and um, you know a lot of people like to have luxuries. So I think people today aren't that much different from people in Sparta. Imported goods. Excavations have revealed that Sparta at this time imported ivory from Egypt, they had scarabs from Egypt, and they had amber from northern Greece. They also got gold from Lydia. And I think all of this is absolutely amazing. It's extraordinary because they were, they were trading with the world. You know, they were getting things all the way from Egypt. They were trading with other parts of the world. And it's just amazing that all this was going on two and a half thousand years ago. The Periokoi were renowned for their skills in carving ivory and bone. Laconian pottery was highly sought after. Spartan bronze workers produced some of the best work of the period. And remember the Periokoi were one of the three groups of people. You had the Spartiates who were the top one, Periokoi was second and the Helots were at the bottom. They're the ones who did all the agricultural work. Uh, but the Periokoi were the ones with the skills. You know, they were making things and doing a lot of the mining and so on. So they're the ones who did a lot of the carvings with ivory and bone. Carvings and pottery. There was a decline in Sparta's production of carvings and pottery, which seems to have been set in by the end of the 6th century BC. One explanation for this might be that while the rest of the Greek city-states started using coinage, Sparta did not. So Sparta was unique in that sense in that they didn't have coinage, they had these iron bars because apparently Lycurgus, remember the great lawgiver who apparently you know established all the rules for Spartan society, he wanted iron bars as, as currency because he thought you know you can't steal them very easily, you can't carry, the, carry them much. So Sparta didn't use coinage um, as much as the other Greek city-states, but some people believe they did have some coins because they had to pay embassies and mercenaries and so on. But generally they didn't use coinage. Another explanation points to the increase in the number of helots and periokoi and a de decrease in the number of spartiates. So remember these were the three big groups and ironically, the top group, the Spartiate group, that's the best group, they were the ones that were going down in number. There was a fear of a Helot and Periokoi revolt. So just imagine, they were the, the bottom two groups, the Helots in particular were doing all the hard work, and there was, there was some bad stories that came out. Um, you know, there's one story about how young Spartan soldiers were training to be soldiers and they'd go and kill a helot person, you know, to practice killing and that would be their first killing. You know, so the helots weren't treated very well it seems and so naturally, you know, they were looking at having a revolt and the Spartiates were concerned that there might be a revolt. This means that the Spartans spent more time on the military rather than artistic pursuits. As Fine sums it up, it was the necessity to keep large populations under control which turned Sparta into a bleak and barren military camp. So you've got this very militaristic society 
and they're trying to keep control of the helots and the perikoi and of course trying to protect themselves from any foreign invaders and they're trying to rival Athens in, in controlling Greece and being the most important city in Greece and so they're basically like a giant military camp. They're leading a very strict, tough lifestyle, just trying to keep control of everything. Oswin Murray says, The military ethos and Spartan educational system produced a society which no longer needed an artist. So this is another aspect. You've got a society where everyone's militaristic. No one's really interested in the arts. People aren't really worried about creativity. People aren't that worried about music or poetry uh, as much as other societies might have been because they're just mainly concerned with the military. Sparta had a bronze industry. It had iron deposits but would have imported copper and tin, which it mixed with for bronze working. They produced small figurines and large statues. They also produced a range of weapons and armour. So naturally they're, they're using the minerals, they're using the tin and so on, and they're, they're producing things like the armour and the swords and the weapons they need. There was a bronze statue of Zeus on Mount Olympia. And in this, over here you can actually see a picture of what the statue may have looked like. So it's a very big, very beautiful statue. You can see the people down here and how small they are compared to this massive statue here. Now, this statue, of course, was of Zeus. Zeus was the king of the gods in ancient Greece. You know, they believed in many different gods, male and female gods, and the gods married and had children. Uh, but Zeus was the king of the gods and they made this beautiful statue of him. It was about five and a half metres high. It was made by Telestus of Sparta. So isn't that amazing? All these years later, he's still remembered. Thousands of years later, his name has gone down in history because he made this great statue. A discovery of 200 ivory carvings at Orthia indicates that this craft was taking place in Sparta. So it wasn't just the bronze making and other things, they did ivory carvings as well. It is believed immigrants brought this skill from North Syria. So once again, you've got this similarity between us and them. You know, they had immigrants, they had trade, they had a lot of things that we have today. It is believed they had some religious meaning. So these ivory carvings, you can see an example of it in the picture. Uh, it's, it must have just been some religious thing. Lead figurines. About 100,000 lead votive reliefs have been found at Orthia. These figurines are only 2.5 centimetres to 8 centimetres high and many were made uh, at the time or, or many were made at, at a single time. So they were mass producing these things. They made things like sphinxes. A sphinx is something that has the body of an animal and the face of a human. You know, in Egypt you have the great sphinx in front of the pyramids. Uh, it's got the face of a lion or really the face of the pharaoh and the body of a lion. So a sphinx is like a face of a human with the body of, of a lion. The winged goddess Orthia. Animals such as lions, horses, armed foot soldiers. They also had painted vases. Painters of pottery were specialists who possibly came from the upper classes. They were possibly periokoi or poorer Spartiates. The most famous pottery is that known as Laconian III, which dates back to C 575 BC. And just, just as a note, C means circa. So they don't know the exact date. It was around 575 BC. C means circa, and circa means around that date. That's when the pottery dates back to. It is believed this pottery was the work of one man. It was exported throughout the Greek world. The most famous example of this is the Arcelus cup. So this is a very famous cup and um, that's the most famous example of this pottery which was exported all around Greece and um, the Greek world. And uh, it's, it was all made by one man apparently.